Our final series test is the root test. The root test is a lot like the ratio test in that we get our answer by comparing with geometric series. Also, the root test is going to work good with series that have factors in it like 2 to the n, n to the n, or just any old expression with an exponent of n on top of it. So let's take a look. My root test is going to say we have our series, a sub n, gone from 1 to infinity. We're going to take the limit of our a sub n's in absolute value and then take the nth root of that absolute value. You let n go off to infinity, and then we're going to see what happens. If this limit winds up being a number that's less than 1, we're going to have that our series converges absolutely. If we take our limit and we get a number that's bigger than 1 or going off to plus infinity, we're going to have that our series diverges. And if we take our limit and we get exactly 1, the answer is going to be, just like the ratio test, inconclusive, and you'll need to do more work. All right, proof of the root test. Well, it's going to be the same proof as for the ratio test, except your inequality is going to be worked with a little bit different. It's just going to be taking things to powers. So we'll skip that. Let's look at some examples. All right, try the series, sum going from 1 to infinity, 2 to the n over n to the n. So you'll note we've got powers of n, so the root test is going to help us strip those off. So let's take a look. We take the limit of, the nth root of, 2 to the n over n to the n. This is the same as raising to the power 1 over n. So it's going to turn our exponents into n over n or just 1. So our limit is just going to be 2 over n. As n goes to infinity, this is going to go to 0. Since that's strictly less than 1, we're going to have absolute convergence. Let's try another one. We take from n going from 2 to infinity, sum over n to the n over natural log to the n. OK, our a sub n here is going to be, well, I can clean things up a little bit, n over natural log of n raised to the nth power. OK, we apply a root test. So I'm going to take the nth root of our a sub n term. So what's going to happen here? We're going to basically just take the inside, raise it to the 1 over n power. So that's just going to take off our raising to the n power. So it's going to be n times 1 over n, which is 1. So we're just left with what's inside. So we're looking at limit of n going to infinity of n over natural log of n. I see where the limit goes in the top and bottom. That's going to give me an infinity over infinity. So that means the Hopital's rule can apply. We have an indeterminate form. So we're going to take the derivative of the top and bottom and see where that goes. The derivative of the top is 1. The derivative of the bottom is 1 over n. I can clean things up by multiplying top and bottom by n. So n over n gives me an n in the top and then a 1 in the bottom. So as n goes off to infinity, our limit's going to be plus infinity. Since I have plus infinity, that's going to be the condition for series is going to diverge. Now let's see what happens when we stick a geometric series in for the root test. We did this for the ratio test, and it recreated the geometric series test, except when r was equal to plus or minus 1. So general term for the geometric series is going to be a sub n equal to a times r raised to the nth power. Now for this to make any sense, we're going to need to have a not equal to 0, so we'll just assume that also. Take my limit as n goes to infinity. What's that going to give me? We're going to take the nth root of absolute value of a, r raised to the nth power, so it's just taking everything here and raising it to the 1 over n. So I'll have absolute value of a raised to the 1 over n times absolute value of r. Now, if we're going to take the limit of this, what I'm going to do is I don't like base a. So I'm going to rewrite this as base a is the same as e to the natural log absolute value of a. So we're really looking at the limit of e to the natural log a over n times absolute value of r. Well, if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, this top piece here is going to go to 0. Okay, Basically, the n is going to get large without bound. We're just going to drive this whole entire top piece down to 0. So this first term here is just going to go to 1. So I take the limit. What's going to be left over is just the absolute value of r. 
So our limit is absolute value of R. And then we're left with the three cases that we had in the ratio test. For R is bigger than one, absolute value of R bigger than one, we get divergence, same as the geometric series test. For absolute value of R strictly less than one, we get convergence, again, geometric series test. But if R is exactly equal to one, meaning R equals plus or minus one, we get inclusive, inconclusive. So we almost get back the geometric series test, except when R is equal to plus or minus one. And note, it's failing for the same exact reason that we are in the ratio test.